Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey with NetTouch Plus. In today's video quick tip, we will be taking a look at the JavaScript logical AND operator. And you might find it's a little more powerful than you originally thought, uh, depending upon how new you are to JavaScript. So crash course if you've never done it before. If we want to verify that A does equal 5 and B does equal 10, and then we do something, we could do something like uh, A equals 5, and we'll use strict equality here, and B equals uh, 10. Then let's do something real world here and alert yay. OK, so what we're doing here is it first checks if this left side is true, and then it moves on to the right side. So does a equal 5? Yes. Then and only then does it continue on to the next side. So if this returns false, this never runs. So what we can do here is take advantage of that and create almost uh, halfway if statements. So let's take a look at another example. Uh, something you might do in a lot of uh, Ajax and JavaScript projects is check to see uh, if this element does not exist on the page, then create it, right? So we could do something kind of cool like document get element by ID, and we want to say if uh, div with an ID of contents does not exist on the page. So if you did not find an element with an ID of contents on the page, then and only then will the right side run. And then we could maybe call create element just do something really kind of half-assed. We'll create the, the element and then the ID and then give it a, a value, hello world. OK, let me create that really quickly. Function create element. It needs to accept the, uh, the type and the ID and the text. Feel free to skip ahead a couple minutes if you uh, don't want to watch this. Our contents, and we're going to create the element that we pass in. So create element type. Uh, next, I need to apply the ID. So contents.id is going to be equal to ID. Not really doing any kind of uh, error checking here, but that's OK. And then I need to append the text here. So we do append child and then document.create text node. So much typing text. And then finally, I need to append it. So document.body.append child contents. All right, let's check this out in the browser and see what we end up with. So refresh the page, and we do get hello world. And you can see that was added. And we didn't do any if statements. So again, if the left side is true, then and only then does the right side run. So if you did not find an element with an ID of contents, then run create element. This is really helpful. And you can do it the other way around. Um, if you did find one, then don't do anything. Cool stuff. Uh, how, where else have I seen this used? Um, they use it for loading jQuery locally. I'm trying to remember who I saw that from. Uh, maybe it was Paul Irish. I can't remember. But uh, let's quickly do that example. And we could do jQuery source. And we could say, if you did not download it, if there was some problem with Google's API, then load it locally. And what could we do? Let's say um, window.jQuery or window.dollar, whatever you want to do. If you did not find, then find that, then that means there was a problem downloading uh, the JavaScript file. In that case, and document.write. And here we'll just add it to the page. So script source equals local jQuery.js. And let me go ahead and escape that. And let's go ahead and get rid of it on the page and see what happens. Refresh. And there it is. So if we did not download it from the page, let's refresh. And this time, jQuery is there. So it's a cool thing. The only thing you want to be careful about is if you use this too religiously, it makes your code a little bit less readable. But we can talk more about that in the comments. And lastly, check out our new HTML5 category on Code Canyon. Just go to Categories and HTML5. I'm out of time. See you guys later. Bye.